It's like Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a very bad meatloaf song. And uh, that's funny because I like meatloaf, but not meatloaf. Um, the kind with ketchup. That kind I like. It's Galatians 3, and welcome to Godcast. And let's go to the Lord, shall we? Thank you, Father in heaven, so much for this great opportunity just to get to read your word. And I pray that we all share it and that there it might be just one person that this will reach your holy word, Lord. It will stand forever. And we ask you for your Holy Spirit to help us understand it and know you better the way you want us to know you, Lord. In your name, Christ Jesus, amen and amen. New American Standard Bible, <clears throat> Galatians 3. Ooh, Paul starts off harshly. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly crucified or portrayed as crucified? This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? So then... Does he who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, therefore recognize that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. For he who are, for all who are works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law to do them. Now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident, for the righteous one will live by faith. However, the law is not of faith. On the contrary, the person who performs them will live by them. So it's like, choose one or another. You can't keep going back to the law and go, oh yeah, no, but we believe in Jesus. Yeah, we have faith that he's, he's all we need. So that's what's going on then. And oddly enough, that's what's going on now. Hmm. Uh, the righteous one will live by faith, Paul writes. And that's uh, verse 12 now. However, the law is not of faith. On the contrary, the person who performs them will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on, on, or hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles, so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brothers and sisters, I speak in terms of human relations. Even though it is only a man's covenant, Yet when it has been ratified, no one sets it aside or adds conditions to it. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to seeds, as one would in referring to many, but rather as in referring to one. And to your seed, that is Christ. What I am saying is this, the law which came 430 years later did not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God so as to nullify the promise. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on a promise. But God has granted it to Abraham by means of a promise. Why the law then? It was added on account of the violations having been ordered through angels at the hand of a mediator until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now, a mediator is not for one party only, but God is only one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Far from it. For if a law had been given that was able to impart life, then righteousness would indeed have been based on law. But the Spirit has confined everyone under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, being confined for the faith that was destined to be revealed. Therefore, the law has become our guardian to us, to lead to us to Christ, so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. 
For you are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For all you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to promise. Awesome, huh? Galatians 3. Every morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, Lord willing, I do Godcast, where I just read a chapter from the Bible. Come on, boy. Read a chapter from the Bible. And um, just so you hear at least something of God's Word every day. A chapter a day keeps false teachers away. Okay? So please let people know. Share this, too. Share this on your page. Not for my glory, but for the Lord's. Hi, Spike. Okay. May God bless you and keep you.